Hey guys, it's Kevin here with eTrailer, and today I'm going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Dexter's line of trailer, hub, and drum assemblies. The drum assembly here is going to be made out of a nice, sturdy iron construction. It's going to come with your grease seal, your races, and your bearings, as well as the lug nuts included, and your dust cap. The only thing about this is that it's not pre-greased, so you will have to get your hands dirty and grease up your bearings. As far as installation goes, this is super simple. It is just messy. Um, just packing those bearings is always a mess no matter how you do it, even if you have a bearing packer. Um, if you want it to be a little bit easier, just ready to go right out of the gate, uh, you can get this same kit with the bearings already pre-greased. To start off our installation, we're going to first have to take off our wheels or we can lift up and support our trailer so that our axles can hang. Um, I've already gone ahead and lifted up the trailer. I have it on jacks. It's all good to go. I just need to take these wheels off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, if you don't have an impact gun, then I definitely recommend doing it on the ground. That way you're not trying to hold the wheel in place and break it off with a wrench. To start up our installation, we're going to first need to lift up our trailer and we'll take off of our wheel and then we're going to remove our idler hub so that we can add on our brakes. Now to do that, we're going to need to take a rubber mallet and we'll pop off our dust cap and you just kind of smack towards yourself just a little bit. You can kind of see it start to lift up off of here and just kind of keep working it loose and turning it. You definitely don't need to hit it too hard. You don't want to end up denting it all up if we have to reuse it. And from there we can go ahead and take a shop towel. Now this is going to be a pretty messy process. You're definitely going to have a bunch of shop towels laying around and some penetrating or some brake clean. I'll kind of clean that up just a bit, make it easier to get off here because our next step is going to be removing our cotter pin. We'll take some needle nose pliers and kind of bend that back straight. So we have it straight enough, we can start pulling it out. And I'm also going to wipe that down because we will be reusing that. It's not going to give you it in the kit. Next we can go ahead and take some channel locks, break our castle nut free, and unscrew it. And then wipe it off some more. I've already gone ahead and pretty much wiped it out. You can spray that with some brake cleaner. And we're going to go ahead. We got one more washer on there that we're going to need. We'll just pull our idler hub forward. And that's going to pop out our outer bearing and our washer. Outer bearing we can set aside because our brake is going, or our hub that we're going to have to install is going to actually have that included. But otherwise, you would need to. Clean it out, and as you can see with that grease on there, it's pretty gross. We'd want to repack that. But we'll go ahead, set that aside. We can pull off our idler hub. And we'll just clean the spindle off, get all that old grease out of the way. So the hub and drum is the peanut butter to the jelly of our electric brake assembly and to find the correct one you're first going to need to know the axle capacity and then you can find out exactly what size brake assembly that you're going to need and then choose the correct hub and drum assembly and you'll also need to know exactly what your bolt pattern is for your wheel just so that you can make sure that that hub matches up and you can still put your wheel back on after adding on electric brakes when you're looking at your wheel you're going to want to denote exactly how many lug nut studs you're going to have in here and then also go ahead and take a quick measurement to find out what exactly the bolt pattern is so if you had even amount you're going to want to go from the center of one hole to the center of the other hole uh, opposite from it if you have an odd one you're going to want to go from the center of the hole to the center space between two of the other holes so when we look at ours right now we know that we have five so we're going to go five on four and a half so we know that we can get a five on four and a half hub 
and then we can figure out exactly what size drum that we need to go along with our braking assembly. Now that we have selected the correct size hub and drum, we're going to go ahead and pack our bearings because on this specific kit, it's not going to come pre-greased. So you will have to do a little bit of work yourself, but you do have the trade-off that you save just a little bit of money. So we'll go ahead, we'll take some grease, and I like to just get a little bit in my hand right here. And then what we're going to do is on the bottom of our bearing, we're just going to kind of pack it in there and just kind of scrape. So easy way, I kind of like to stick my fingers in there and prevent the grease from just going through the center and just keep scraping it. And as we get it packed in there, it's going to start poking out the top. Can add a little bit more. Now this is a super messy thing to do, so definitely recommend wearing gloves. You can see it's starting to pack up right there. It's coming through, whereas over here we don't have any grease yet, so we can start working our way around. Once you've got it fully packed, you can also go around the sides of it and just kind of grease that up as well. And once we're all good, we'll go ahead and set that down and we'll grease up our other bearing. So this smaller one is going to be our outer one, the larger one is going to be our inner. And then on our grease seal, I'm just going to grease the outside of it. And I'm going to go real light with that. I don't want to go too crazy and goopy. Just a nice thin layer. So I'll do that right now. Because afterwards, I like to just take these gloves off and toss them and put some new ones on. Now we can go ahead and drop in our inner bearing. And then we'll drop in our grease seal. Now when we hammer this in, we want to make sure that we get it in nice and straight. That way... We don't have any leaks. Uh, typically what we do here is just grab a uh, little piece of wood so we can get an even pressure along it. Um, today I just have a little piece of metal I'm going to hammer against. That's going to give us a nice even spot to kind of hammer it down with. feel around, make sure that it's fully down. Might give it just a little bit more. Alright, now that that's packed in there, we can go ahead and we'll lube up our spindle. Go ahead and just kind of rub that all on there. Now we can go ahead and slip on our hub and drum. Then we can put in our inner bearing, our outer bearing. Push that in. It might not want to go all the way at first. Typically, you got to kind of play with your drum. But we can go ahead and slip on our washer and our castle nut, and that'll kind of help push it the rest of the way on. Take my channel locks, and what I like to do with the castle nut is just go all the way until it's fully tight and then back it off make sure that we have no play in our drum. So now that I have it fully tight, back it off and we'll line up a little bit more. We have our opening for our cotter pin and we'll just slip that right in. And I go just a little bit looser. There we go, and then we can take our needle nose pliers and pry our cotter pin back up. Last thing to do is just put on our dust cap. I like to get it on pretty even first, just by hand, and then come back and tap it into place with a rubber mallet. And that's just going to help prevent any grime or dust and dirt from getting in there and messing up our grease. Well, I think about does it for today's look at and installation of the Dexter's line of hub and drum assemblies. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.